um, they get away with it. I mean, that's the message that the U.S. government seems to be sending, and then what most people don't understand is after September 11th, a few months after it, I was watching the Spanish news. There's a Spanish reporter named Tomas Regalado. He's a Cuban. You can check him on the Internet, see if you can find any information on him. It's Tomas Regalado, um, T-O-M-A-S, Tomas, which is Thomas in Spanish, and then Regalado, it's R-E-G-A-L-B-O. And um, in a 30-second soundbite, what he said was that the FBI discovered that there was a neo-Nazi conspiracy to overthrow the government, that they found entire armies and militias that were hiding out, planning to overthrow the government, that they had amassed weapons and bombs and all sorts of things, and that uh, they were planning to make a series of terrorist attacks that were so horrible that it was going to make 9-11 look like a picnic in the park. What they were planning to do is they were planning to attack all the military bases in the south and the southern states, just blow them up and start a type of a civil war, a guerrilla war, like the civil war between the Confederates and the Unionists. And they were going to get the National Guard to come over there so that way they could wipe out the National Guard and all the soldiers and then finally overthrow the government and take over. This was only in a 30-second soundbite on the Spanish news. I never saw it on the American media, so why is it that the Spanish media was able to to expose this in a 30-second soundbite, but the American media didn't mention any of that, you know? Well, there, are you, there is some censorship. I, I, I love the news, uh, but I believe that we're only going to see things uh, that we need to see, and I think a lot of countries are that way. Do you? Do you think other yeah. countries like China, they, I think there is some censorship. Oh, yeah. There's, a, there's all kinds of censorship in China. They've even made uh, deals with uh, corporations like Google to limit what kind of searches people can find on the Internet to limit freedom of speech. So they've done that. Wait, did they begin, that. Do you know when they began doing that? They've been doing that, like, for at least two years now. They've done that perhaps even longer than that that it automatically came out in a report, but they probably started doing that ever since they started introducing capitalism to the country. I mean, it wouldn't surprise me if they've been doing it that long, but yeah, they've already, they're already doing that. Google made a deal with the Chinese government to limit what kind of things could be searched on their engine so that people couldn't find out about um, freedom of speech or workers' rights or anything, anything of that kind. They've already done that. That's nothing new, and the only reason I found out about it is because I heard it from a few activists and then a couple of times, only a few times, on the media, I think maybe on Yahoo, they mentioned it and that was basically it, and then on the news, they never actually say it. It came out in the independent media, you know, like Democracy Now!, which is a show in New York by Amy Goodman and everything. It came out there, but it doesn't come out in the regular mainstream media. The neo-Nazism that you just spoke of, they wanted to make 9-11, another 9-11, and even worse than 9-11. Oh, Do you yeah. think that some of these people have already infiltrated our government and they're working from the inside? Oh, it's possible. It's already been proven in old historical doctrines that they had members of the KKK and neo-Nazis and everything were already members. I mean, the first American Nazi parties, they were created by U.S. soldiers that ironically fought against the Nazis, but then when they realized what Hitler was all about, his racist, um, anti-Semitic policies and everything, they came back here and they created the American Nazi parties. So, I mean, if they have people as high as soldiers going up there, same thing a few years ago um, during World War II before the America came into the war, there was this paranoid, fanatical, extremist person, I think, in control of the immigration department. His name was Breckenridge Long, and he knew that Jewish people were being slaughtered, and he still turned the Jews all the way back to the death camps when they tried to come to this country. Breckenridge Long, you know, he sent them all the way back there knowing that they were going to be slaughtered and tortured. So obviously there were people in this government that already had prior knowledge and everything, about what was going on in Germany, and they still didn't care. In fact, some of them even thought that it was good, that it was beneficial, when if you take a look in history, 
the Jehovah's Witnesses, there are a religious Christian group here, the leader, J.R. Rutherford, he was disgusted by what the Nazis were doing, so he started international protests against the Nazis, and he was criticizing the U.S. government for doing nothing about it, and then for having sent the Jews back over there, guess what happened? Rutherford and most of the Jehovah's Witness leaders were put into jail, accused of being communists who were trying to overthrow the government and other things, false charges. Um, the only reason they even cared in the end was because of the Japanese attack on Pearl Harbor and then Germany declared war in the U.S., but if it wasn't for that, they never would have done anything because they were in agreement with most of what Hitler did. They even had movements in this country, not neo-Nazis. This was when Hitler was already in control. Hitler had sent people into this country to create American versions of the Nazi party and everything. It was called the, um, the Friends of the New Germany at first, and then it was called the German-American Boom. And then um, even before Hitler was come to power, he sent people to come over here to study uh, the U.S. history, because if you look at U.S. history, they had a eugenics program way before Hitler had, where they were sterilizing people they viewed as inferior based on their genes or something, um, the genocide of the natives, all kinds of things, and even the Jim Crow laws, they studied them so that when they returned to Germany, they could adopt all of these policies and all of these programs to the Nazi government. And uh, you and I both see uh, Nazis uh, still in this, well, actually in this country, and they're rising. They seem to be rising in power. We see them all over YouTube. We see the infiltration. We see a lot of organized stalking. What do you think about the organized stalking in this country? Well, I mean, uh, for the people in the movement, we don't really call it organized stalking. We call it uh, government persecution. But, yeah, it's the same thing either way. But, um, yeah, it's actually very scary to see this because it's not just uh, what you would call organized stalking. It's also that many people, many activists have disappeared without a trace. Like, there's an organization in Los Angeles that their name I won't name so they won't uh, get in trouble, but they were allied with a group of people, African-American socialists who called themselves the Black Lighters. Mm -hmm. And they were arrested by the police and they tried to get all their lawyers and everything to get these people freed from police control. But the police denied that they ever arrested them. Then they had other people come in to try to get them freed, and it turns out they were no longer in police custody, so to this day they still don't know what happened to the Black Lighters. For all we know, they could be in Guantanamo Bay being tortured right now, or perhaps even killed and thrown in a ditch, so the same thing that's happened in Latin America with what we're known as the desaparecidos that disappeared, it's happening in this country. There are many people who have disappeared, even Amy Goodman from Democracy Now!, she even mentioned it a few years back. Um, sometime before the Hurricane Katrina crisis, she said that many people had disappeared left and right all over the country, just without a, without a trace, nothing. And the only way that could possibly happen is if the government was involved in it, because no group, no matter how powerful the group would be, would be able to do that unless it was a government in themselves who were doing it. So it's not just an issue of persecution, it's an issue of people disappearing all over the country and the government pretending that they don't know where they are when in fact they do know where they are because they were the ones that had taken these people. No one's safe anymore. Why do you think, uh, well, we called organized stalking because of course we didn't know what it was. It, it took us to, victims to time to figure out what it is and we came up with a name for it. Why do you think certain people are being persecuted? There's a lot of Jewish, there's a lot of Christian, I get a few Muslims. Uh, there's a lot of minorities uh, that are being persecuted. Why do you think this is all happening? Why are certain people chosen? Well, I mean, the majority of the case with government persecution in any regime around the world usually is people of the state views as a threat mm -hmm. because they've spoken out against the government or they've made statements that make them uncomfortable or anything like that. So they go after these people to try to silence them. But with the whole thing in this country, is totally different than any government persecution in the world except during the time when Hitler was in power in Germany because people are being persecuted in this country based on what religion and skin color they are because they come from the Middle East. 
and some people have even been secretly kidnapped and deported.